Hello, Confermans. I hope that you and your families are doing well in this strange and uncertain time. I miss not being able to gather with all of you on Sunday, so this is going to have to do. We have two classes remaining in our confirmation year. You guys are so close to the finish line. These last two classes, we're going to have a new format. There will be a short video by me, and then the short clip that we normally watch together, and then a page of homework. So I ask that you do all three of those parts. These last two questions are timely questions for us. The first is, is it okay to be angry at God? And that's going to be the subject of this video. Next week, we will ask, Why does God let bad things happen? As I said, these are timely questions. So let's dive in with the question about being angry at God. Is it okay? Is it a sin to be mad at God? Does loving God mean we can never and should never be angry at God? Listen to this psalm, Psalm 88. O Lord, God of my salvation, when at night I cry out in your presence, let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of troubles and my life draws near to Sheol. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like those who have no help, like the forsaken among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, like those whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have put me in the depths of the pit, in the regions dark and deep. Your wrath lies heavy on me, and you overwhelm me with all of your waves. O Lord, why do you cast me off? Why do you hide your face from me? Wretched and close to death from my youth up, I suffer your terrors. I am desperate. Your wrath has swept over me. Your dread assaults destroy me. They surround me like a flood all day long. From all sides, they close in on me. You have caused friend and neighbor to shun me. My companions are in darkness. Wow. That's some serious anger right there. Cry after cry of frustration at God, and yet no response. The psalmist doesn't mince words. He thinks that God is to blame for his predicament, for his life being in shambles, for being near to death. And the psalmist places a responsibility for that situation squarely on God's shoulders. God and no one else must answer for this situation. The very life of the psalmist is in God's hands. And the psalmist said that God is crushing him. And this psalm is in the Bible. Right there. Psalm 88, after 87, before Psalm 89. And Psalm 89 says, I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. If God felt comfortable with that angry psalm being included in Scripture forever, you know, I think the obvious conclusion is that God can handle our anger. God is not going to respond to our anger with hatred. God does not despise our anger. And God does not want us to bottle up our feelings before we come in to the sanctuary for worship. God, I fully believe, is glad when in moments of deep anger and frustration, we still come to God to pour out our hearts. And that, I think, is the key. To have the kind of faith that in moments of utter despair, you still turn to God. To have a kind of faith that in every moment, the joyful and the mundane, the distraught, to still go to God in prayer, which is what the psalmist does. So I invite you at this time to watch uh, the week 16 video and then to follow that up by doing the week 16 homework and then email that in to me. 
I just want you to know that I am praying for you and for your families during this strange and uncertain time. And I look forward to our next video for our final class.